Fibroids are common benign growths of the uterus. They actually start from a single muscle cell in the uterine wall and can grow and cause symptoms by either affecting the lining of the womb, in which case they cause heavy periods, anemia and debilitation, or they can cause symptoms by virtue of the fact that fibroids grow and get larger and press on adjacent organs, such as the bladder causing frequency of urination, the colon causing constipation, or they can stem the abdomen causing unsightly lump in the lower abdomen and generally cause a sensation of bloating. Sometimes they can press on spinal nerves and cause sciatica. Today we're going to talk about fibroid embolization. This is a minimally invasive, non-surgical treatment for fibroids. It replaces the traditional treatment for which is hysterectomy in many cases. Now, compared to hysterectomy, fibroid embolization has much lower complication rates and a much shorter convalescence period. The same applies with comparison to an operation called a myomectomy, which is performed in patients who wish to retain their fertility, where the surgeon attempts to cut out fibroids from the uterus. Again, the complication rate of fibroid embolization is much less, and the convalescence period much shorter. Before the patient gets to the imaging suite, they've had a consultation with the interventional radiologist and sometimes an MRI scan to show the fibroids in great detail. This is an MRI scan of the patient's pelvis, and what we have done is looking at the pelvis side on, like this, this is the backbone, this is the front of the tummy, this is the muscle at the front of the tummy, this is actually the bladder, and this is the area of the uterus. And you can see this big black area here, which is a single large fibroid. When we inject the contrast medium into the main blood vessel of aorta, this is what you see. You can see the contrast medium coming down through the arteries in the pelvis and giving me a road map of the vessels in the pelvis so that I can see the vessels supplying the uterus and the fibroids. And this actually shows the two arteries supplying the uterus coming in from either side. Now we're going to cut to our graphic, which shows the catheter passing into the right pelvic artery, over the top of the bifurcation, and down into the left pelvic arteries, and then passing into the left uterine artery. And when the catheter is placed in position in the left uterine artery, we inject tiny particles called PVA or polyvinyl acrylic. These pass to the fibroids, only leaving the normal uterine tissue unaffected, and the fibroids are deprived of their blood supply and they are killed. There are various types of fibroids classified according to their positions. If they lie within the wall of the uterus, they are called intramural. If they protrude into the cavity of the uterus and affect the lining of the womb, they are called submucosal. If they stick on the outside of the uterus, they are called subserosal. And if they are actually stuck on a little stalk, they are called pedunculated. The great merit of fibroid embolization is that it kills all the fibroids in one hit. The recurrence rate after this procedure is extremely small. Most patients with fibroids are suitable for the procedure, regardless of if they have one or numerous fibroids. After the procedure, the patients do get pain, which we control with a cocktail of drugs. It lasts approximately 10 to 12 hours, and the convalescence period after fibroid embolization is approximately two weeks. We try to give you a brief overview of fibroid embolization. There is a lot more detail on the subject on our website. Fibroid embolization is approved by the National Institute for Clinical Excellence for routine use. And finally, thank you for watching.